digital representation of data image. So we are going to take a look at images today and essentially images that we're going to look at kind of fall into two categories. So we'll define it first as an image is a data type and a form of media which displays a still form of color and shape combinations. Okay and so I wanted to be very careful with my definition of what an image is. Usually they do portray color or at least black and white okay and a variety of shapes and they are still they're not moving. Once our images start moving okay they're classified as a video or it might be that we're spinning out a bit and our images are coming to life I don't know okay but really a still graphic okay that has uh, colors and the combination of shapes we classify as an image images can be collected by digital cameras or created from scratch using software there are two classifications of images which include bitmapped and vector images so first we're going to take a look at bitmapped images okay these are the type of images that we make in our paint programs they're full of color we draw them up we color them in we use the fill tool okay I'm sure you've all got experience using a bitmap paint program and drawing an image so bitmap graphics are graphics that are created and edited using a paint program that's the classification of a program that makes bitmapped images which store and manipulate each pixel of the graphics so these graphics are made up of what's known as little squares called pixels okay they are a collection of bits that create the image in the form of one entire graphic. So every single pixel, every single bit related to that pixel, okay, has data behind it. It consists of a matrix of pixels, and this refers to the image's resolution. The more pixels you have, the greater resolution, and then the sharper and higher quality the image is, all containing their own colors. And the amount of colors and data available for each pixel is known as its bit depth. And this goes up exponentially based on binary values and they are created using software or digital cameras as I mentioned before. File sizes are large as each individual pixel contains data. Okay, so if you're developing a high resolution image, oftentimes when it is uncompressed, okay, it could be larger than a compressed full length movie. Okay, and that's how an extremely high resolution image is when it is uncompressed. Therefore, compression may be necessary. When images are scaled and modified, they can often become distorted or pixelated. Images are made to be a certain size, okay? And if you do start zooming in, okay, especially if an image is lower resolution or if it has been compressed, you will see what's known as pixelation. It all starts going blocky and you can see colors kind of uh, going into square shapes. Okay, it doesn't look good when you zoom in, okay? They're meant to be a certain resolution and a certain size of the image. Okay, software includes Adobe Photoshop and Paint to make images. Okay, and file formats include BMP, which is the uncompressed bitmapped image format, and then JPEG, PNG, and GIF, which are compressed image formats, okay, which reduce the file size so we, that we can use images on obviously saving them on our systems, okay, at a reasonable file size, or uploading them onto the internet so they don't consume too much bandwidth when they are online. So we will move on now to vector, okay, and vector images are created, okay, and edited using what's known as drawing programs, okay, which store the image data in the form of mathematical definitions. Okay, curves are constructed as a sequence of cubic segments rather than linear ones, okay, so they're all created mathematically, okay, the angles that they're going at, and you can actually draw the lines by entering in values which relate to lines, length, shape, direction, and angle, okay. Full images are created as a collection of objects, such as shapes and lines created via pre-programmed equations, okay? And as you can see in that top right corner, we're combining different shapes together, okay, in order to make certain objects. And then you can kind of cut out uh, snip using snipping tools, uh, the lines on the inside to make an actual outline of a new shape. Smaller files, because they only contain data about the Bezier curves that form the drawing, okay? So essentially, it's not recording information about each pixel of the actual uh, image as the bitmap does, okay? Which And every single one of those pixels contain data which increase file sizes. Instead, it just keeps equations stored, okay? Related to the actual lines drawn in the drawing, okay? And that is greatly reduces the file size, okay? With that as well, vector drawings can continue to be scaled without quality loss because you can keep zooming in and the screen size and the zoom adjust based on the equation as opposed to pixels. So it's very unlikely that you'll get pixelation. Instead, you just zoom in and you can, as I said, uh, you see the actual lines, okay, which are obviously a sequence of lines, okay, for the pre-programmed equations, okay, just it starts to get a bit blocky as you go in, but 
it still readjusts pending on the scale. Software includes Adobe Illustrator and AutoCAD for drawing images, okay, and their file formats include DWG, AI, and ESP. Okay, so I hope this video has helped give you a bit of an introduction to what the, uh, the representation of images are on information systems, and essentially how we have two categories of images, bitmapped and vector graphics. Now, one thing I want to make clear too is that when you see images in your video game programs, okay, where you've got characters running around and all that, 3D images are actually made through a combination of vector and bitmap, okay? The 3D models themselves would be made vector using polygons to create the characters and their shape and equations to obviously move the character around and give it, a you know, its body a bit of uh, movement, okay? But then the actual skins that go on top of the character would be bitmapped, okay? The, the skins you put on top of the images so they don't, they don't look like these wonky polygons anymore, but actually start to look like real life human characters in your games, those skins would be drawn in bitmap programs. So just a bit of food for thought there. If you are following this pathway and you're thinking about something like game design, you need to know a bit of both of these if you're going to go that way, all right?